Today, let's take a quick run-through of how to configure FL Digi. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. When I first got my ticket roughly a decade ago, PSK31 was all the rage, and FL Digi was what I used back then to get on the air with a digital mode like PSK31. However, as time went by and more and more new digital modes came out, FL Digi was almost forgotten about by a lot of people. Well, recently we started playing with a digital net in our local area here, and while I could remember some things, I just couldn't remember all of it, and it took me a little bit to remember all of the configuration settings that I needed. I hope today's video will help you get your FL Digi set up and running if it's something you haven't played with before, or like me, it's been a while. Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and let's take a look at the basic configuration for FL Digi. So if this is your first time opening FL Digi, you're going to get this configuration wizard. Let's just go ahead right here on the screen and click next and fill out some basic information here. Once you've got that filled out, go ahead and click the next button. On the next screen here, we want to put a check mark right here by port audio, and then we're going to select our capture and playback device. Now for this particular example, I am using a DigiRig sound card feeding into an HT. So that'll be this USB PNP sound device right here. And we're going to make that selection for both of these. Once we have that, let's go ahead and click Next. We're not going to make any changes to this particular screen, so let's just click Next. And again, we're not going to make any changes to this particular screen in this case. Let's go ahead and, and choose Next here. And once again, on the following screen, let's once again just choose Next without making any changes. And once we come up to this screen, again, no changes. Let's go ahead and click Finish. And that's going to let FL Digi go ahead and open. Now, we do want to make a few changes once this opens, but first, we need to find out some information on our DigiRig sound card. So I'm going to go over to the terminal, and I'm going to run ls space hyphen l space forward slash dev serial forward slash by hyphen id. Let's go ahead and press return there. Let me expand this out just a little bit more so you can see it a little easier. And what you're going to find with the DigiRig sound card in particular is going to be this USB Silicon Labs device. And we need to note that it's pointed towards TTY USB 4. That's information we're going to need here in just a second. Now let's go ahead and open the Configure tab and go to the Config dialog. You're going to see that same information that we just entered a minute ago in the wizard. But we want to come right down here to Rig Control specific again for the DigiRig. And I'm going to show you guys, if you happen to be using FL Rig, I'll show you how to set that up here in just a second. But for the DigiRig itself, let's click right here where you see Hardware PTT. We're going to choose to use a separate serial port for PTT, so put a check mark by that. And then right here where it says Device, this is where we're going to find that TTY USB 4. You will also see it right here listed as the dev serial by ID. You can choose that one if you wish, or you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and choose TTY USB 4. Either one of those will work for you. Finally, uh, for the DigiRig, we want to put a check mark right here by use RTS, and then click initialize. Once you've done that, you do want to click the save button. Now, if you're running a radio that's configured to work with FL Rig, you would not do this step that I just described. Instead, you would go right up here to where it says FL Rig, and you would just put a check mark right here where it says Enable FL Rig Transceiver Control with FL Digi as a client. Once you selected that, you would be set up to use FL Rig to key the radio. However, with the DigiRig sound card and an HT, we do need to use that hardware PTT button. Next, we're going to open up the miscellaneous section and we're going to come down to NBIMS interface. On this page, you want to make sure that the data file interface is enabled and it should be by default. Let's go ahead and put a check mark in this open message folder. 
And then we need to locate FL message because we want FL message to automatically open if we receive an FL message form. Going back to the terminal, I'm going to just clear that screen and then let's run where is FL message. That's going to tell you exactly where FL message is located. So we just need to copy this information and we will paste it into this file or uh, this box right here. So I'll just go ahead and use control V on my keyboard to paste that information into this section. Let's go ahead and click save. Next, let's take a look at the sweet spot. It's in that same miscellaneous section, but let's go ahead and click on sweet spot and make sure that all three of these are set to 1500. And the last thing I want to look at in the configuration dialog box, we're going to scroll down to the bottom and we're going to click on UI. Once that UI is expanded, let's go ahead and click on macro buttons. I prefer to run two scheme four. And as you may have noticed, I now have two rows of macros down here on the bottom versus one. You can choose to show all 48 macros, but I find that choosing uh, or showing 24 at a time is typically plenty. And I'm going to do another video on how to build out these macros, and that video will be dropping uh, probably within the next few days. Let's go ahead and click Save here, and then we can follow that up with Close. Now, we run the Reed Solomon IDs in our area. If that's something you're going to use, go ahead and click this button right up at the top that says RX ID and the one that says TXID. Briefly, what those do is every time you start to transmit, it puts out a special tone that lets the other station know what mode you're transmitting in. As long as they have both their TX and RX ID uh, enabled, their FL Digi would automatically swap to whatever mode you're transmitting in. The last thing we need to do for this basic setup is go ahead and come up to op mode. Let's come down to MT63, and we're going to choose MT63 2000L. And we will center that up at 1500 on the waterfall. So I'm just going to click right there around 1500. If you look right down here at this box, it tells me I'm actually centered at 1504. I can use this left arrow to get it back to exactly 1500. And now that I open the squelch on the HT, you can see the waterfall is coming in beautifully down here. It might be a little bit hot. If it is with an HT, you control that with your volume setting on the HT itself. So as I start to decrease the volume on the HT, you'll see that the waterfall decreases as well. So there's a lot less yellow in it now than there was a second ago. I'm at a volume setting of 1 at this point, and you can see that we've got a nice blue waterfall there, which should be a good starting point for you, but you might need to increase that volume if you're not getting good decodes in FL Digi. Now, I did just realize one thing that I missed in that configuration, so I'm going to go back up to Configure and the Configure dialog box. Let's go ahead and expand that modem section and let's click on MT63. Once you click on MT63, you should click this centered at 1500 shares. All that's going to do is that's going to automatically center the MT63 modem at 1500 on the waterfall, so you don't have to manually move it around like I did a while ago. Once you've got that check mark, just go ahead and click Save and Close. And that's how we configure FL Digi for our local 2 meter net. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.